And once you're ready, let us know. I am. Can you guys see my screen here? Yes, we can see it. All right. Uh, fantastic. Wonderful to see you all here in this session today. My name is Dibanjan Mukherjee. I'm an assistant professor here in the mechanical engineering department. I am also courtesy of my research affiliated with the biomedical program and the BioFrontiers Institute. And lastly, many of you who are um, applying, you might be interested to know that I, along with one of my colleagues, Nick Potinas, am also uh, the faculty leads for our graduate recruitment event called GEARS, which Vera, uh, Anna, uh, Megan, uh, us, and most importantly, the entire student body plays a role in organizing together. Uh, my job, however, today here is a little bit more uh, focused. Um, I'm trying to uh, present to you a snapshot of our biomedical research program at ME and try to hopefully convince you that this is a fantastic program for you guys to apply to. And one of the most important things that I wanted to get started with is um, when we say biomedical sciences in uh, mechanical engineering, uh, you know, what are we talking about? Um, and I think our research program within our department can be summarized with this thematic uh, emphasis on engineering health and life. And within that uh, umbrella or canopy, we actually have a sequence of research, uh, I would say, themes and programs that run uh, with multiple faculty who work collaboratively together and also with other faculty across. Um, biomechanics is one of them, biomaterials and biofluids. And then there's also specialty divisions like biomedical imaging and biomedical devices. Um, so today I'll try to go through a little bit of each of these subdivisions and then kind of try to um, string everything back together. Our biomechanics faculty are listed over here, um, you know, Professor Ahmed, Professor Bartolo, uh, Professor Calvi, Professor Ferguson, Professor Lynch, Professor New, and Professor Verneri. And um, together, these faculty and their research programs really cut across a, a large span of exciting research projects. Um, uh, I've uh, chosen to give you a few, uh, I would say, like uh, visual indicators of some of these uh, um, you know, research areas. But you can see it is as diverse as going from the cellular level, so mechanics of extracellular matrix and um, tissue deformation, um, all the way to neural control of movement and then into diseases such as cancer and, um, and musculoskeletal diseases as well. We also have, courtesy, some of the exciting work done by Professor Ferguson and her lab and her collaborators. We also have some exciting claims to having sent mice in the space station and do research on the biomechanics of what these mice actually uh, undergo. Um, biomaterials uh, is another division of our research program. We have Professor Bruns, Professor Tan, Professor Bartolo, Professor Calvi, and Professor Verneri. Um, you will see that many of our faculty are kind of listed in multiple of these divisions, and I think that's an important thing to note because that kind of indicates the interdisciplinarity and the collaborative nature of our research program within the department, which um, we believe is a core strength of our program overall across all the different thematic areas that we offer to PhD students. This is an example of some of the work that happens on the biomaterials side. Um, we, you know, it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, Professor Bruns runs a, an exciting program on, um, you know, customizable tattoos and how tattoos can be used for the purpose of uh, health and health monitoring and, and, and other health-related applications. Um, you have bio-inspired materials and biomimetics, um, as well as materials for biomedical devices, such as stents and bypass grafts that are used in surgeries. Um, the next division of research or the next uh, program that we have is biofluids. Um, Professor Borden, Professor Ding, Professor Hertzberg, and myself. Um, and uh, the, some of the work that we do here, you know, goes again from all the way from tiny microscopic scales, um, including microfluidic devices and drug delivery for um, at the cellular level. And we go from that tiny levels of detail all the way to full organ systems, such as the heart and the brain, which is something that my group does. Um, and uh, lastly, um, you know, our uh, overall ME program is uh, very strong in terms of um, air quality and indoor air health. And uh, in connection with that, we do a lot of biofluids work related to indoor air in health and disease, particularly infection and pathogen transmission as well. Um, we have a faculty who specialize also in biomedical imaging. 
um, this is not only imaging sciences, but also the application of advanced imaging in biomedical applications. So we have Professor Borden, Professor Botinas, who is my co-chair with the um, recruitment event Kears, um, Professor Murray and Professor New. And, uh, you know, as you can see, we, um, we cover a wide spectrum all the way from developing ultrasound imaging technique and molecular imaging techniques, all the way to uh, uh, using bubbles as contrast agents for medical applications and then image guided drug delivery applications as well. And then finally, um, most of our research does have an angle that goes into development of new devices. Uh, but this, um, these faculty, Professor Bruns, Professor Ding, and Professor Rentschler are, I would say, specialists in the area. And they do a lot of work in terms of um, developing new device technologies, such as lab on a chip, surgical robotics and soft robotics, um, self-assembled machines, and also novel assay and biochemical technology design for health applications as well. Um, so kind of uh, zooming out now as we, uh, you know, uh, cut across all of these different exciting research areas, maybe some of it catches your fancy. It's also interesting to note that we are, uh, you know, very um, well posed within this program in terms of certain other um, enablers of exciting opportunities that make our program pretty unique, uh, I would say. Um, one of the things that we offer is a really wide array of specialized coursework in the field of biomedical engineering that uh, is run by faculty who you saw listed on the previous slides. Um, biomechanics and mechanobiology, microfluidics, um, fluid mechanics in the human body, anatomy and physiology, cancer mechanics, ultrasound. Um, as you can see, we, we essentially you know, provide a pretty diverse palette for you to choose from in terms of developing your training in this area, which I feel is a, is a core strength. Um, we also have um, a good array of um, uh, research groups that is highly active and uh, that is uh, you know, well-funded. Uh, therefore, we are able to kind of continuously seek opportunities and, and develop opportunities for doctoral students as well. Um, there are a lot of current open positions that um, you will see advertised uh, um, throughout the recruitment season. At this point of time, for example, we already know that Professor Ding is looking for PhD students, Professor Bruns, myself, Professor Bartolau. We are all looking for PhD students and we have active openings. So we encourage you to kind of look through some of these groups as you apply if you are interested in this. Um, one important thing to note is you can always reach out to Vera, Megan, and Anna, as well as to the faculty whom you're interested in and uh, and uh, in, inquire more about uh, openings and opportunities and we would be um, absolutely delighted to hear from you. Uh, master students on the call, there's a lot of master's thesis work that also happens within our department. I think like that is a um, strength that, uh, you know, it's not mentioned here in detail, but it's a, it's a, it's something that we are growing in um, continuously uh, as more and more interdisciplinary research projects open up. Um, so please do feel free to reach out to us as well, because there are plenty of master's thesis options that are also available. And lastly, um, we in Boulder are pretty uniquely poised in terms of, um, you know, several interesting, uh, uh, you know, aspects like Vera mentioned, um, the local ecosystem, uh, as what I say, um, there are many collaborative um, initiatives such as the BioFrontiers Institute that I'm a part of the IQ biology program that also I advise students for, um, top rated research facilities and shared facilities within our institution, the light microscopy facility is uh, fantastic. And I encourage you to check out their uh, link um, on the website. Um, and we have a lot of close collaborations with Front Range Medical Powerhouse campuses, like the Anschutz Medical Campus. It's rated as one of the top research medical campuses in the country. Children's Colorado is a huge pediatric research center that has a lot of uh, applications and uh, avenues that they enable. Uh, abundant industry opportunities locally. Medtronic has a huge campus, um, very close to our own campus. Um, Pfizer, um, Archer, Terumo, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, uh, big players in, in bio that exist here. And speaking of the landscape of exciting opportunities, you know, uh, this is uh, one of the other aspects of the landscape that should be of um, interest to all of you um, getting to do great research, but also getting to do great research in a wonderful place. So with that, I will close my uh, spiel and I will hand this over to my colleague, uh, Nicole Shu, who will take you down the road of robotics. Nicole, I think you're muted.
Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Okay, great. I can't close my laptop apparently. And <laughs> okay. Do you see my screen? Yes. I also see your desktop. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. All right. The life of a professor. All right. So it, it is very exciting to get to talk to you guys about all the exciting opportunities in robotics at ME at CU Boulder. So we have nine plus core and affiliated faculty, and I'll be providing an overview of robotics researchers and opportunities in this department. So first, I want to give a broad overview and talk about all the exciting research that we're doing. And so we do a lot of publications in high impact journals, such as Science, Science Robotics, IEEE Robotics and Automation Letters, as well as Nature and Nature Communications. I'll be talking about some of this work with particular faculty later on. And we also have exciting uh, opportunities in entrepreneurship. So we have a couple of startups that have been founded at CU Boulder, including Artemis Robotics, which builds these actuators, as well as Aspero Medical that I will talk about when we get to Mark Rentschler's group. Um, we have earned over $14 million in new robotics grants since 2017 as of last year. So this averages to about $1.8 million per year per faculty, and we collaborate with lots of different groups. So you can see some of our funding agencies, which include uh, AFOSR, DARPA, NASA, NSF, uh, NIH, etc. And to begin, I'd like to talk about some of the grand challenges of science robotics, and this is pulled from a paper that was published in 2018 talking about these grand challenges and the prospective of robotics for the next 10 years. So we're about halfway into that 10 years. Um, and uh, so the focus of this paper was talking about all of the, the different avenues within robotics, which includes new materials and fabrication schemes, biohybrid and bio-inspired robots, power and energy constraints, robot swarms, navigation and exploration, AI for robotics, brain-computer interfaces, social interaction, medical robotics, and robot ethics and security. And so when I go over uh, different faculty members' research, you will see that we cover almost all of these topics uh, just among our nine plus faculty. And we are planning to hire one more robotics faculty in ME, so that is also very exciting. So first, I'd like to start with uh, Nick Botanis's work. So Professor Botanis works on diagnostic ultrasound imaging to improve the image quality by developing various complementary transducer sampling and acoustal, acoustic signal processing to help doctors and patients. And so uh, Debanjan also covered that he does a lot of biomedical research. Uh, one of the interesting papers that was just recently published uh, is about a bubble-based micro-robot that Professor Botanist created, and it can swim in a mouse bladder and release drugs once it attaches to this epithelium. And to this end, the first couple of professors that I will discuss are uh, all related to medical robotics. Next, we have Professor Mark Rentschler, who studies the fundamentals of intelligent medical devices and surgical robotics. So that includes both their design as well as patient interactions to improve people's quality of life. Uh, some of the medical devices that he creates includes textured inflatable balloons. And from this, Aspero Medical uh, creates these anchoring consistencies. So it uses these like tiny little micro textures that you can see over here for GI endoscopies. And so it's been shown that they can have success rates in the first surgery, which is quite rare within medicine. Next, we have Professor Alea Ahmed, who studies how the human brain controls movement. So she uses a neuroeconomic approach that combines techniques from neuroscience, as well as economics, psychology, and engineering to understand the various costs and constraints uh, of decision making, as well as learning and control in humans. So specifically, she looks at some movement-specific changes in the meta metabolic costs of motion for people with multiple scler sclerosis. It's a, it's a handful. Jacob Siegel studies uh, uh, artificial devices using appropriate sensory feedback, which includes using neural interfaces as, as well as developing devices uh, that includes translational biomechatronics, as well as prosthetics and machine learning algorithms. And Professor Siegel's recent work includes work on prosthetic thumbs and hands. So you can see a couple of really cool prosthetics that he has worked on. 
And finally, within the medical robotics professors, we have uh, Professor Kara Welker, who works on effective assistive devices that can help people with movement impairments or augment everyday motion in healthy populations to then reduce fatigue or injury. And she uses a very interdisciplinary approach in biomechanics, as well as haptics and robotics. And she's currently installing a treadmill in her lab for experiments, so that's very exciting work. Uh, some of her research, recent work is on knee ankle prostheses, looking at sit-stand motions as well. So moving on from the medical robotics faculty onto more uh, classical and bio-inspired faculty, we have Professor Robert McCurdy, who works on building robots using optimization algorithms and fabrication techniques that then automate the design and production of customized robots to then speed up this entire process. So his overall goal is to create robots that can create robots. Um, so the idea is to automate the entire design so that robots can walk straight out of the printer. And some recent work in his lab is using 3D printing with bitmaps to then create gradients of soft tissues for surgical planning. So also a little bit of a bio medical approach. Next is Professor Sean Humbert, who works on flight dynamics and control, bio-inspired perception and estimation, looking at flies as model organisms, as well as autonomous robotics. So his recent work includes a soft robotic shape display with high-speed actuation, sensing, and control. And this is in collaboration with Mark Rentschler. Um, this work was recently published in Nature Communications. And another exciting uh, piece of research that he does is working on the design and testing of skis with Blister Labs in Colorado. Next, we have Professor Kaushik Jairam, who works on bio-inspired and micro-robots on land for search and rescue missions. So one of his uh, exciting papers that was published recently is on Imclary, which is an insect scale robot that can morph to travel over various terrain in laterally combined spaces. He also works on some microelectronic sensors and he used to work on live cockroaches for biohybrid approaches. So that is really exciting work that he is also planning on continuing in the future. And finally, my work is on bio-inspired swimming robots, and the idea is that we want to create these energy-efficient, low-cost environmental sensors that can be used to track markers of climate change. So my lab is uh, a combination of various robotics work as well as fluid mechanics and biology. And some of my recent papers include a uh, biohybrid robotic jellyfish that incorporates a live animal with a microelectronic system, as well as some more um, pure fluid dynamic work. So looking at shark inspired surfaces for drag reduction. And so feeding back into the grand challenges of science robotics, you can see that we cover a lot of these topics. So new materials and fabrication schemes, Rob is an expert on that. Uh, quite a few of us work on biohybrid and bio-inspired robotics. Uh, all of us look at power and energy in these systems. Um, Sean in particular is starting to look, look more at robot swarms. We work on navigation and exploration. Um, Jacob Siegel works on AI for robotics. Um, there are lots of people in medical robotics, prosthesis, uh, surgery, et cetera. And I also do a little bit of work on robot ethics and the ethics of using animals in research. So to summarize that, we can basically split our faculty into people who work on medical robotics and people who work on more classical and bio-inspired robotics. And as I mentioned previously, we are also looking for one new robotics faculty. So that will be an exciting search this year. And mirroring what Debanjan showed earlier about the landscape of exciting opportunities, I want to highlight a couple of, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, gosh. I want to highlight a couple of specialized courses here. So we have advanced dynamics. We have modeling of human movement and uh, this should be two courses. Modeling of human movement is one, and then the next one is bio-inspired robotics. There's also a new course that I'm developing called biohybrid robotics, so using um, organic materials in machines. There's wearable technologies, medical device design, human biomechanics, and motor control. And there are uh, several current open positions in various labs. I highly encourage you to reach out to individual faculty members, as well as email Vera and Megan about opportunities at CU Boulder. And in terms of the promising robotics avenues at Boulder, uh, again, this is a very highly diverse and interdisciplinary pro program that focuses on impact in human lives, as well as society and looking at the broader environment. So we have lots of collaborations among our faculty 
faculty um, within the department as well as within the entire university. There are many maker spaces at the ITLL, the Idea Forge, and Atlas. So we have lots of opportunities and lots of resources for students. There is also an abundant uh, opportunity uh, landscape for working with industries. So many startups and CU founded companies have. Um, have launched in the past couple of years. So lots of interesting and exciting opportunities in robotics at ME. And with that, I would like to pass on the mic to Grace Burleson, who is a new faculty member here. Thank you, Nicole. Let me get my screen sharing going. I have a window behind me, so there's a <laughs> quite a bright light. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, first of all, thank you everyone for tuning in to learn more about the programs that we offer and potential um, PhD research opportunities. My name is Grace Burleson. I am a new faculty member in the mechanical engineering department. I am currently recruiting uh, PhD students for a new research group we're calling Global Design. This research group seeks to advance design methodology and theory with the goal that the engineering solutions we're designing and implementing have improved social and environmental outcomes. Um, we work in a subfield called design science and design science focuses on process. So what methods, um, processes, practices are engineers doing during design and how can we um, implement additional methods or um, improve our methods so that the solutions we develop have improved social outcomes and positive and you know have positive uh, benefits for society um, also to reduce harm that sometimes engineering solutions can have on society uh, this research includes a lot of ethnographic methods and human subjects uh, methods and data collection for example conducting um, team-based experiments interviews and participant observations. Um, there's four available research areas that we're actively recruiting for. The first is contextual product design. So this is an area of study on how the broader context influences the design of artifacts as well as their effect on society. So for example, if you're designing a product for Boulder, Colorado versus a product for Nairobi, Kenya, there's going to be different um, cultural con and um, contextual considerations that go into that product design. And we wanna investigate that further. The second area is in socially engaged and equity centered design. So this area really focuses on improving methods to center individuals who maybe have been historically um, uh, not included in engineering design processes. And so broadening our stakeholder engagement so that the designs we're working on um, have more benefits to more people. The third area is on engineering social impact metrics. So what even is a benefit to society? How are we measuring this through technology? And then can we incorporate those findings into our design process earlier to improve future uh, engineering design? And the fourth area is on scoping sustainability problems. So we know that we have these large, um, you know, some call them wicked problems of climate change, um, you know, poverty in, in many communities. And so how do we take these large, crazy problems, scope them down into something that, you know, has actionable requirements and is scoped for an engineer to then, um, you know, uh, design a solution for, and then advance um, the needle on some of these large uh, problems. Um, a little bit more about studying design at CU. So um, a really exciting thing about uh, this university is just the multidisciplinary um, aspect of design. Many different colleges and programs throughout the university offer design courses. So by doing um, you know, mechanical engineering degree, you get that technical emphasis in mechanical engineering with a variety of different courses that are 
department offers. And next year we'll be offering a new course on design science research, research methods. Um, but then in addition to that, you get to um, also have the opportunity to take courses across the, the uh, university, depending on um, you know, your area of emphasis. And that can really help kind of well have a well-rounded education in your PhD, um, depending on what you're specifically interested in. Um, so thanks everyone for your attention and I'll turn it back to Vera. Thank you, Grace. We'll stop recording right now.